The Triant Empire had launched their most terrifying weapon yet, oxygen bombs that choked the life out of aliens across the galaxy. But humanity just kept on breathing. Dr. Gary Warren stared at the readouts in disbelief. His captured Romulan test subject lay dead, asphyxiated by a few puffs of pure oxygen, the same oxygen coursing through Warren's own lungs. The implications hit him like a plasma blast. Humans were immune to the Triant's deadliest weapon. More than that, Earth's very atmosphere could become an impenetrable shield. There was no time to lose. The Triant Blitzkrieg had already reduced a dozen human colonies to mass alien graves. Earth's defenses were buckling, casualties mounted by the hour. Warren had to act fast but carefully. One misstep and the Triants would unleash an even deadlier onslaught to eliminate humanity's newfound advantage. In his desperation, Warren turned to his Romulan colleague Rigel, one of the few alien refugees Earth had taken in. Rigel urged utmost secrecy, knowing their homeworld would become an even bigger target if the Triants discovered the human immunity. But Warren and Rigel weren't the only ones grappling with this earth-shattering revelation. Their every word was being monitored by Earth's increasingly desperate military leaders. General Marcus Graves pounced on the oxygen discovery like a starving wolf. Overriding all objections, Graves fast-tracked a black ops mission to turn the Triant's own weapon against them with a daring strike into the heart of enemy territory. And he would drag Dr. Warren into the suicide mission to weaponize his research or see Rigel deported to certain death. Warren had no choice. With humanity's survival hanging by a thread, he joined an elite force of soldiers, spies, and maverick scientists on a quest behind enemy lines. Armed with little more than guts and oxygen, they would plunge into the toxic miasma of a triant world to unleash a weapon that could finally turn the tide, if it didn't escalate the conflict beyond anything the galaxy had ever seen. The daring mission was humanity's best hope, and Warren's worst nightmare. The human strike team materialized out of the swirling toxic mists, their cloaking devices shimmering as they strained to maintain the protective field. Captain Jack Wilder held up a fist, signaling the squad to halt as his keen eyes scanned the harsh alien landscape. The Triant homeworld was a nightmarish hellscape, its atmosphere a corrosive mix of noxious gases that would sear the lungs of any unprotected human. Sergeant Rico Martinez moved up beside Wilder, his breath rasping through his oxygen mask. I don't like this, Cap. It's too quiet. Where are the patrols? As if in answer, a bone-chilling shriek pierced the air. Wilder's head snapped up, his combat instincts screaming a warning. Drones! Incoming at two o'clock! The team scattered, seeking cover among the twisted ruins of Triant structures as a swarm of heavily armed drones descended upon them. Wilder cursed as he saw the sophisticated sensor arrays jam-packed from the drone's chassis. They were designed for one purpose, to hunt down and eliminate any non-triant lifeforms. Activate cloaking devices, Wilder barked into his comm. Warren, I need that stealth tech of yours to work some magic now. Dr. Gary Warren's voice crackled over the channel, tight with tension. Engaging experimental cloaking matrix. It should disrupt their sensors, but I can't guarantee for how long. A shimmering veil enveloped the team as Warren's device hummed to life. The drones hesitated, their scanners struggling to lock onto the humans' suddenly elusive life signs. Wilder held his breath, willing the untested technology to hold. For a moment it seemed to work. The drones hovered uncertainly, their sensors probing the area in confusion. But then, disaster struck. Martinez let out a strangled cry as his cloaking device sputtered and died, exposing him to the toxic air. The drones zeroed in on the stricken soldier, their weapons whining as they prepared to fire. Martinez is hit, Lieutenant Sarah Novak shouted, springing from cover to drag the convulsing soldier to safety. Wilder laid down a blistering barrage of covering fire, his pulse rifle spitting streams of searing plasma at the drones. Fall back, Wilder roared over the chaos. We need to find shelter now. The team beat a hasty retreat, Novak and another soldier half carrying, half dragging the critically injured Martinez between them. Wilder's mind raced as he scanned the hellish landscape for a defensible position. There, the rusted hulk of an abandoned Triant industrial complex loomed out of the swirling mist. There's our fallback point, 
Wilder said grimly, pointing to the dilapidated structure. Let's move, people. We're not dying on this godforsaken rock. As the team stumbled into the relative safety of the complex, Wilder took stock of the situation. Martinez was fading fast, his lungs ravaged by the corrosive atmosphere. Novak worked frantically to stabilize him, but her medical gear was woefully inadequate for the task. Wilder gritted his teeth, the weight of command heavy on his shoulders. He had to make a call, and he had to make it now. Every second they delayed, the Triants drew closer to unleashing their terrifying oxygen bombs on Earth. Lieutenant Novak, stay here with Martinez. Do what you can to keep him stable, Wilder ordered, his voice grim. The rest of you, with me, we're pushing on to the target. Novak looked up sharply, her eyes blazing with a mix of anger and desperation. Sir, I can't just leave him. That's an order, Lieutenant, Wilder snapped, his tone brooking no argument. The mission comes first. We have to secure those blueprints, or all of this will be for nothing. With a final, agonized look at Martinez's still form, Novak nodded tightly. Yes, sir, I'll do what I can. As Wilder led the remnants of his team out into the toxic, triant landscape, he couldn't shake the feeling that he had just condemned two of his people to a grim fate. But there was no turning back now. Earth's survival hinged on the success of their desperate mission. They had to push on at any expense. The stealth ship's engines thrummed as it accelerated away from the Triant homeworld, leaving behind a trail of ionized particles. Captain Wilder stood on the bridge, his eyes hardened as he watched the alien planet shrink to a distant speck on the monitor. We're clear of their detection range, sir, reported the helm officer, setting course for Earth. Wilder nodded, allowing himself a moment of relief before the weight of their next challenge settled on his shoulders. He tapped his comm badge. Dr. Warren, status report on Martinez and Novak. Warren's voice crackled through the speaker, tight with tension. They're stable for now, Captain. The ship's medical facilities are impressive, but I've never seen lung damage quite like this. It's going to be touch and go. Understood. Do what you can. Wilder cut the channel and turned to face Corporal Jin Sato, who was hunched over a console, his fingers flying across the holographic interface. Any progress on the encryption, Corporal? Sato looked up, dark circles under his eyes betraying his exhaustion. It's unlike anything I've ever seen, sir. The Triants are using some kind of quantum entangled key system. I've been throwing every decryption algorithm we have at it, but... He trailed off, shaking his head. Wilder leaned in, lowering his voice. I don't need to tell you what's at stake here, Sato. That data drive is our only shot at stopping the oxygen bombs. Find a way in. Yes, sir, Sato replied, turning back to his work with rekindled perseverance. Hours stretched into days as the ship hurtled through space. Wilder paced the bridge, fielding increasingly terse communications from General Graves. The tension aboard the vessel was palpable, a powder keg ready to ignite at the slightest spark. We should destroy it, growled Sergeant Donovan, banging his hand on a nearby bulkhead. If the Triants find out we stole those plans and waste everything we sacrificed to get them, countered Lieutenant Chen. Martinez and Novak nearly died for this. Wilder stepped between them, his voice low and dangerous. That's enough. We have our orders. Sato will crack the encryption and we'll deliver the plans to Earth. End of discussion. Just then, Sato's voice rang out across the bridge. Captain, I think I've found something. Wilder was at his side in an instant. What is it? Sato's eyes were wide with excitement. There's a pattern in their programming language, a recurring sequence that doesn't fit with the rest of the code. I think it might be a backdoor or a flaw in their encryption algorithm. Can you exploit it? Wilder asked, hope rising in his chest. I'm trying now, Sato replied, his fingers a blur of motion. If I can just... There. The main view screen flickered to life, displaying a cascade of alien symbols and diagrams. Sato had managed to decrypt a portion of the blueprints. My God, Wilder breathed, staring at the partial schematics. Is that... The oxygen bomb, Sato confirmed. And sir, look at this section here. It details the atmospheric ignition process. If we can reverse engineer it, we might be able to develop a countermeasure, Wilder finished. He tapped his comm badge. 
Dr. Warren to the bridge now. As Warren arrived, looking haggard but determined, the medical bay doors hissed open. Martinez and Novak stumbled onto the bridge, their faces pale but their eyes blazing with determination. Sir, Novak rasped, her voice still raw from the toxic exposure. We heard. Whatever you need, we're ready. Wilder nodded, a surge of pride for his team filling his chest. All right, people, listen up. We've got a foothold, but there's still work to do. Sato, keep working on that encryption. Warren, I want you and Novak analyzing these partial schematics. See if you can extrapolate the full design. Martinez, coordinate with Earth. Make sure they're ready to receive the data as soon as we crack it. The bridge erupted into a flurry of activity. Hours ticked by as the team worked tirelessly, fueled by a potent mix of desperation and hope. Slowly but surely, the pieces began to fall into place. Captain, Sato called out, his voice hoarse from exhaustion. I think we've got it. The full blueprints, they're decrypted. Wilder's heart raced as he studied the complete schematics. The oxygen bomb's devastating potential was laid bare before him, but so too was the key to neutralizing it. Transmit everything to Earth, he ordered, and set a course for home. We're not out of this yet, but for the first time since this war began, we've got a fighting chance. As the stealth ship altered course, accelerating towards Earth, Wilder knew the real battle was just beginning. The Triants would not take this theft lightly, and humanity's struggle for survival was a long way to go. But with the oxygen bomb's secrets in hand and his team at his side, Wilder allowed himself a moment of cautious optimism. Whatever came next, they would face it together. The stealth ship's arrival on Earth was met with a flurry of activity. As soon as they docked, a team of scientists descended upon them, eagerly snatching up the decrypted oxygen bomb blueprints. Dr. Warren found himself whisked away to a top-secret facility deep beneath the Rocky Mountains. General Graves stood at the head of a long table, his weathered face illuminated by the harsh glow of holographic displays. Gentlemen, ladies, we have one shot at this. The Triants won't sit idle for long. Warren rubbed his bleary eyes, staring at the complex schematics floating before him. The bomb's atmospheric ignition process is unlike anything we've seen. It's not just about oxygen concentration. It's altering the very molecular structure of our air. A xenobiologist named Dr. Chen leaned forward, her brow furrowed. What if we approach this from the other direction? Instead of trying to stop the bombs, we make ourselves resistant to their effects. Warren's eyes widened. Genetic therapy to enhance our respiratory systems? It's risky, but... Do it, Graves ordered, his voice brooking no argument. I want prototypes ready for human trials within the week. As Earth's scientific community threw themselves into their work, light years away on the Triant homeworld, a very different scene was unfolding. Obsidian Guard Commandant Zara Vax stood rigidly at attention, her scaled skin glistening with nervous sweat. Before her loomed the imposing figure of Archon Moloch, supreme ruler of the Triant Empire. Moloch's voice was a sibilant hiss. You have failed me, Commandant. The humans have stolen our most closely guarded secrets. Vax struggled to keep her voice steady. My lord, I take full responsibility. I will rectify this error... Silence! Moloch roared, his massive claws gouging furrows in his ornate throne. You will hunt down these vermin and recover our data, or your hide will decorate my chambers. Vax bowed low, backing out of the throne room. Her mind raced, considering her options. There was only one operative she could trust with a mission of this magnitude. In a dingy bar on the fringes of Triant space, Craxus sat hunched over a glass of foul-smelling liquor. The assassin's cybernetic eye whirred as it focused on Vax approaching. I need you, old friend, Vax said without preamble. Craxus sneered, revealing razor-sharp teeth. And why should I care about your problems? Vax leaned in close. Because the humans are involved. The same humans responsible for the uprising that killed your mate. The glass in Craxus's hands shattered as his augmented muscles clenched. Tell me everything. Weeks later, aboard the medical frigate Mercy, Captain Wilder stood at Lieutenant Novak's bedside. Her chest rose and fell steadily, the stasis field shimmering around her. We did it, Sarah, he whispered. 
The Romulans are safe, but we paid a hell of a price. A sharp rap on the door interrupted his vigil. Sergeant Martinez entered, his face grim. Sir, we've got a problem. Our agent on Centauri Prime just went dark. His last transmission mentioned something about a Tryon assassin. Wilder's blood ran cold. Alert General Graves, we need to... The ship rocked violently, alarms blaring throughout the vessel. Wilder sprinted to the bridge, his heart pounding. Report, he barked, taking in the chaos around him. Multiple Triant ships, sir, the tactical officer shouted. They came out of nowhere, some kind of new cloaking technology. Through the view screen, Wilder watched in horror as sleek Triant vessels tore through the nebula's swirling gases, weapons blazing. A Romulan cruiser erupted in a ball of flame, its death throes illuminating the ethereal clouds. Evasive maneuvers, Wilder ordered. Get our people out of there. As the battle raged, Dr. Warren's voice crackled over the comm. Captain, I have an idea. It's risky, but it might be our only shot. Wilder gritted his teeth. At this point, Doctor, I'm all ears. We modify the life support systems to vent pure oxygen from the hulls, Warren explained rapidly. The nebula's gases are highly unstable. If we can ignite them... Do it, Wilder commanded. The next few minutes were a blur of frantic activity. As Triant ships closed in for the kill, Wilder watched the oxygen levels rise on his display. Now, he shouted. A blinding flash erupted as the vented oxygen met the nebula's volatile atmosphere. Triant ships vanished in swirling infernos, their dying screams echoing across the comms. But victory came at a steep cost. As the fires died down, Wilder saw the extent of the damage to his own fleet. And in the medical bay, Lieutenant Novak's vitals flatlined as shrapnel tore through the stasis field. With heavy hearts, the battered human ships limped towards the nearest outpost. The Triants had been driven back, but at a terrible price. And somewhere out there, an implacable assassin named Craxus was drawing ever closer to his prey. The Defiance hull groaned as it accelerated towards the edge of the Draxon Nebula. Captain Wilder stood on the bridge, his eyes fixed on the swirling gases beyond the viewscreen. The joint human-Romulan strike force spread out behind them, a patchwork armada united against a common foe. All ships report ready, sir. Lieutenant Chen announced, her voice taut with anticipation. Wilder nodded, allowing himself a fleeting moment to consider the absent Lieutenant Novak. She and Dr. Warren were light years away, working tirelessly on new weapons that might turn the tide of this war. He pushed the thought aside, focusing on the task at hand. Commence Operation Firestorm, he ordered. The fleet surged forward, penetrating the nebula's outer layers. For a moment, all seemed quiet. Then chaos erupted. Brilliant flashes of light burst across the nebula, each detonation sending shockwaves that buffeted the Allied ships. Wilder gripped his chair as the Defiant rocked violently. Minefield! Sergeant Martinez shouted from tactical. They're oxygen bomb detonators! Before Wilder could respond, a new threat emerged. Swarms of sleek, dart-like objects streaked through the gaseous clouds, zeroing in on the disoriented fleet. Explosive drones incoming, Chen warned. Wilder's mind raced, assessing their dire situation. The nebula had become a death trap, and every moment they remained sealed their fate. All ships disengage and retreat, he commanded, his voice carrying across the fleet-wide channel. This is Captain Wilder. Fall back immediately. As the battered ships struggled to comply, Wilder turned to his helmsman. Set a course directly through the thickest part of the nebula. Maximum thrust. Sir, the young officer questioned, his eyes wide. Do it, Wilder insisted. Activate the experimental oxygenation shielding. We're going to clear a path. The Defiant surged forward, its hull glowing as the shielding interacted with the volatile gases. Behind them, a trail of fire erupted, consuming pursuing drones and creating a temporary corridor for the retreating fleet. Emerging from the Inferno, Wilder saw their true objective, the Triant Shipyards, and there, nearing completion, loomed the massive form of a Triant Dreadnought. Sir, our shields are failing, Chen reported, hull integrity at 62% and dropping. Wilder's heart made. 
Target the Dreadnought's oxygen bomb payload. Fire everything we've got. The Defiant's weapons blaze to life, unleashing a barrage of ballistic fire. For a heartbeat, nothing happened. Then, the world turned white. The Dreadnought's warheads detonated in a catastrophic chain reaction. A shockwave of searing plasma engulfed the shipyards, vaporizing everything in its path. The Defiant, caught in the blast periphery, spun wildly as systems failed across the ship. On the rapidly disintegrating command deck of the shipyards, Craxus snarled in fury. He dove into an emergency escape pod moments before the structure collapsed around him. As the pod jettisoned into space, Craxus watched the humans' victory through eyes clouded with hate. The Defiant limped away from the devastation, its hull scarred and blackened. In the medical bay, Wilder allowed himself to be treated for burns and broken ribs, his mind already racing ahead to the war's next phase. Across the galaxy, in a fortified bunker beneath the Rocky Mountains, Lieutenant Novak hobbled to a conference room, her body still weak from her near-death experience. Dr. Warren waited inside, his face grave. We've done it, Warren said without preamble. We can alter Earth's atmosphere, raise the oxygen levels to heights only the hardiest humans can survive. Novak's breath caught in her throat. And the triance? Warren's eyes met hers filled with a mixture of triumph and dread. It would be like poison to them, delivered on a planetary scale. As the implications sank in, Novak realized the war had entered a new, terrifying phase. The power to reshape worlds now rested in their hands, and the fate of two species hung in the balance. The Defiance Bridge hummed with tension as Captain Wilder surveyed the holographic display of Archon Moloch's throne world. Swirling clouds of noxious gases obscured the planet's surface, a stark reminder of the alien environment they sought to transform. All ships report ready, sir, Lieutenant Chen announced, her voice steady despite the gravity of their mission. Wilder nodded, his mind focused. Commence Operation Oxygen Dawn. The human Romulan armada surged forward, a gleaming array of weaponry and perseverance. As they entered the outer reaches of the Triant system, Alarms blared across the bridge. Multiple contacts, Sergeant Martinez shouted. Triant reserve fleets incoming. Wilder's eyes narrowed. They were waiting for us. All ships, battle formation Delta, prepare for engagement. The space between the opposing fleets erupted in a dazzling light show as energy weapons crisscrossed the void. Sleek Triant ships darted between lumbering human cruisers, their agility a stark contrast to the raw firepower of their adversaries. In the Defiant's retrofitted science lab, Dr. Warren and Lieutenant Novak worked feverishly, monitoring the atmospheric converters strapped to each allied vessel. Oxygen levels holding steady, Novak reported, her fingers dancing across a control panel. But if we take too much damage... Warren nodded grimly. Then we become bombs ourselves. Let's hope the captain's aim is true. Outside, the battle raged. Romulan warbirds unleashed salvos of disruptor fire, carving swathes through triant formations. Human dreadnoughts absorbed punishment, their hulls glowing red-hot as they returned devastating broadsides. On the bridge of his flagship, Archon Moloch hissed in frustration. Deploy the Obsidian Guard! Crush these vermin! A swarm of jet-black fighters poured from triant hangars, weaving through debris fields with impossible precision. Wilder watched in dismay as Allied ships began to fall under the onslaught. Sir, Chen called out, her voice urgent. We're receiving a transmission on from the Triants. Wilder's brow furrowed. On screen. The scarred visage of Craxus filled the view screen, his cybernetic eye whirring as it focused. Captain Wilder, the assassin growled, your attack ends here. Surrender now, and perhaps Archon Mullock will grant you a swift death. Wilder's response was cold steel. All ships, push forward! Break through their lines! The human Romulan fleet surged ahead, weathering a storm of triant fire. Explosions blossomed in the void as ships on both sides succumbed to the carnage. In the science lab, alarms shrieked as damage reports flooded in. We're losing containment, Novak shouted. If we don't launch soon... Warren's face was grim. 
We may not get another chance. Captain, we need to act now. Wilder's voice crackled over the comm. Understood, Doctor. All ships, prepare for atmospheric conversion deployment. Fire on my mark. The Defiance shuddered as a Triant cruiser raked its port side with plasma cannons. Wilder gripped his chair, watching the throne world loom ever closer on the main view screen. Fire, he roared. A salvo of shimmering missiles erupted from the Allied fleet, streaking towards the Triant homeworld. Craxus's eyes widened in realization, but it was too late. The projectiles plunged into the planet's thick atmosphere, detonating in silent flashes of light. For a moment, nothing seemed to happen. Then, like a time-lapse of creation itself, the throne world's gaseous shell began to churn and writhe. Noxious clouds dissipated, replaced by swirling eddies of life-giving oxygen. On the planet's surface, triant soldiers clawed at their throats, scales blistering as the air turned toxic. In reinforced bunkers, the elite scrambled for sealed chambers and emergency rebreathers. Archon Malak watched in horror as his world burned. No, he whispered, cybernetic tendrils writhing in agitation. This cannot be. As the atmosphere continued its inexorable transformation, Wilder turned to his crew. Prepare boarding parties. We're going after Moloch himself. The Defiant plunged towards the smoldering planet, oxygen-rich fire licking at its hull. The Defiant shuddered as it broke through the last wisps of the transformed atmosphere. Captain Wilder led the charge onto the planet's surface, his eyes stinging from the oxygen-rich air. The once lush landscapes of Archon Moloch's throne world now lay barren, scorched by the very element that sustained human life. As Wilder's team breached the inner sanctum of Moloch's fortress, they found only emptiness. The Archon had vanished, leaving behind a haunting message etched into the walls. You have sown the wind, now reap the whirlwind. Months later, the Nightingale glided into Earth's orbit. Wilder stood on the bridge, his face haggard from sleepless nights. The view screens flickered with news reports from across the galaxy. Economic sanctions imposed by the Dominion of United Peoples. Accusations of war crimes against Earth's leadership. Protests erupting on multiple worlds. Lieutenant Chen approached, her voice low. Sir, we're receiving a priority transmission from General Graves. Wilder nodded, bracing himself. Graves' hologram materialized, his eyes hard as flint. Captain, the situation has become untenable. We're initiating Protocol Ironclad. Effective immediately, Earth is under martial law. Wilder's face hardened. General, is this truly necessary? The diplomatic fallout is precisely why we must act now. Graves cut him off. We cannot allow alien powers to dictate humanity's future. You've done your part, Captain. Now it's time for a new phase in this war. As the transmission ended, Wilder turned to find Lieutenant Novak standing behind him. Her eyes were hollow, haunted by the devastation they had wrought. I can't do this anymore, Captain, she whispered. I'm resigning my commission. Wilder reached out, but Novak was already walking away. He watched her go, feeling the weight of their actions pressing down upon him. In the medical bay, Dr. Warren pored over data streams, searching for alternatives to the cycle of violence. His fingers trembled as he typed. The faces of triant civilians seared into his memory. On a distant Romulan colony, Novak knelt in a garden of alien flora. She closed her eyes, seeking peace but finding only the echoes of a world burning. Deep within the bowels of Earth's military complex, Craxus prowled the shadows, his cybernetic eye whirred, scanning for targets. General Graves' orders were clear. Silence the dissenters by any means necessary. And in a subterranean bunker, light years away, Archon Malak gathered his loyalists. Holographic displays flickered around them, showing schematics of Earth's weapons facilities. Our agents are in place, a triant lieutenant hissed. We await your command, Archon. Moloch's scales gleamed in the dim light. Proceed, he growled. If we cannot rule this galaxy, we shall watch it burn. As the orders were transmitted, a lone signal pulsed across the vastness of space. On the Nightingale, an encrypted message flashed across Novak's abandoned console. The fire spreads. Only you can stop the Inferno. 
Lieutenant Sarah Novak's hands trembled as she disconnected from the encrypted transmission. The weight of her decision pressed down upon her, but there was no turning back now. She glanced at the hulking figure of Craxus, the triant assassin who now stood as her unlikely ally. We move in thirty minutes, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. Are you ready? Craxus's cybernetic eye whirred as he focused on her. Always, he hissed. The Nightingale's stealth systems hummed to life as they approached Earth's orbital defenses. Novak's heart raced as they slipped past the watchful eyes of General Graves's patrols. The blue-green orb of humanity's homeworld loomed before them, its beauty masking the rot that had taken hold at its core. As they neared Luna, alarms blared across the ship's bridge. Proximity alert! the AI intoned. Cerberus strike team detected. Novak cursed under her breath. Graves must have caught wind of our plan. Craxus, we need to split up. I'll confront Dr. Beck while you provide Overwatch. The lunar facility's sterile corridors echoed with Novak's footsteps as she approached the lab where Dr. Harlan Beck worked. She found him hunched over a terminal, his eyes wild with panic. Dr. Beck, Novak called out, her voice steady despite her racing pulse. Step away from the console. Beck whirled around, his hand darting towards a concealed weapon. You don't understand, he sputtered. Moloch promised us salvation. In a blur of motion, Beck lunged at Novak. They grappled fiercely, crashing into delicate equipment. Novak felt her strength failing as Beck's fingers closed around her throat. A soft hiss cut through the air, and Beck's grip suddenly loosened. He slumped to the floor, a tranquilizer dart protruding from his neck. Novak gasped for air, nodding gratefully towards the shadows where she knew Craxus lurked. Her relief was short-lived. Claxons wailed as the facility entered lockdown. Novak! Craxus's voice crackled over her calm. Cerberus teams are converging on your position. We need to move. The next few minutes passed in a chaotic blur. Novak sprinted through twisting corridors, the sounds of gunfire and screams echoing all around her. Craxus materialized beside her, his hands stained with blood. The landing bay, Novak panted. It's our only way out. They rounded a corner and froze. General Graves stood before them, flanked by towering figures that were more machine than man. The general's eyes blazed with fury. Lieutenant Novak, he spat, your treason ends here. Novak's mind raced, assessing their options. With a swift motion, she grabbed a nearby oxygen canister and hurled it at the cyborg soldiers. As it exploded, she ignited her plasma torch, creating a makeshift flamethrower that sent Graves and his men reeling. Run! she shouted to Craxus. They sprinted towards the Nightingale, alarms blaring all around them. Novak felt the deck plates shudder beneath her feet as the ship's engines roared to life. She turned to see Craxus stumble, clutching his side where a stray shot had found its mark. Leave me, the assassin growled. Novak hesitated for a fraction of a second before grabbing Craxus's arm and hauling him aboard. As the Nightingale's ramp closed behind them, Graves' voice boomed over the facility's speakers. This isn't over, Novak. I'll hunt you to the ends of the galaxy if I have to. The ship rocketed away from Luna, alarms still blaring as they pushed through Earth's defensive grid. Novak stumbled to the medical bay, dragging the barely conscious Craxus with her. As she worked to stabilize him, fragments of information spilled from his lips. Moloch, bombs, hidden in plain sight. Novak's eyes widened as the pieces began to fall into place. She glanced at the navigation console, plotting a course deeper into Graves' territory. The race to stop Moloch's world burners had begun, and the fate of billions hung in the balance. The Nightingale streaked through the void, its engines straining as Novak pushed the ship to its limits. Her fingers danced across the navigation console, plotting a course for the Creos system. Hold on, Craxus, she muttered, glancing at the wounded Triant assassin slumped in the co-pilot seat. We're almost there. As they approached Creos 4, proximity alarms blared. A dozen sleek warships materialized from behind the moon's toxic haze. Graves, Novak hissed, recognizing the elite guard insignia. The calm crackled to life. Lieutenant Novak, power down your engines and prepare to be boarded. 
Novak's response was to slam the throttle forward. The Nightingale dove towards the moon's surface, weaving through a hail of plasma fire. A lucky shot clipped the starboard engine, sending the ship into a violent spin. Klaxons wailed as Novak fought for control. Brace for impact! The Nightingale plowed into Kriosphor's barren landscape, carving a miles-long furrow before grinding to a halt. Acrid smoke filled the cockpit as Novak struggled to her feet. She hauled Craxus from his seat, the triant scales slick with blood. We need to move, she coughed, hearing the whine of guard dropships approaching. They stumbled from the wreckage, Novak supporting Craxus's weight. The moon's poisonous atmosphere swirled around them, visibility dropping to mere meters. Craxus gestured weakly towards a ridgeline in the distance. There, he rasped. Old outpost, sealed modules. They half ran, half crawled through the toxic fog, the sound of guard boots crunching on gravel growing ever closer. At last, they reached a half-buried airlock. Novak's fingers trembled as she input the ancient triant access codes Craxus had given her. With a hiss of stale air, the door slid open. They tumbled inside, Novak slamming the emergency seal shut behind them. As life support systems hummed to life, she turned her attention to Craxus's wounds. Stay with me, she urged, applying Medigel to the worst of the lacerations. What's Moloch's endgame? What are these bombs? Craxus's cybernetic eye flickered. Not bombs, he wheezed. Catalysts. Ignite. Atmospheres. Turn planets to fire. Novak's blood ran cold. She helped Craxus to his feet and they made their way deeper into the outpost. Dust-covered consoles sprang to life at their approach. There, Craxus pointed, infiltrator database. Novak's fingers flew across the keys, decrypting files and cross-referencing data. A face materialized on the screen, a human with cold, calculating eyes. Dr. Salem Corver, she breathed. He was on Warren's team. Traitor, Craxus spat, building final trigger. Here. The outpost shuddered. Novak glanced at a security feed to see guard troops breaching the outer defenses. We're out of time, she said, drawing her sidearm. Where's Corver's lab? They raced through twisting corridors, the sound of gunfire growing closer. As they rounded a corner, a swarm of triant combat drones filled the air. Novak fired, downing two. But there were too many. Craxus shoved her behind a bulkhead. Go! He roared. Stop, Corver. I'll hold them off. Novak hesitated for a heartbeat, then nodded. She sprinted toward the lab, the sounds of Craxus's last stand fading behind her. The lab door exploded inward as Novak's breaching charge detonated. Through the smoke, she saw Corver hunched over a pulsing device. Step away from the trigger, she commanded, weapon raised. Corver's lips curled into a sneer. You're too late, Lieutenant. Moloch's vision will... His words were cut short as Novak's plasma bolt struck him squarely in the chest. She leapt over his fallen body, frantically working to disarm the prototype. As the device powered down, Novak allowed herself a moment of relief. It was short-lived. The lab doors hissed open, revealing Graves' lieutenant flanked by captured Nightingale crew. It's over, Novak, the man growled. Novak's eyes darted around the room, searching for options. With a swift motion, she overloaded the lab's power core. Alarms blared as the outpost systems began to fail. You're right, she said, dropping into a fighting stance. It is. The lieutenant charged, and Novak met him head on. They traded blows in a brutal dance, evenly matched. As they grappled, Novak felt the outpost's artificial gravity fluctuate. With a final surge of strength, she hurled the lieutenant into a bank of computers. Sparks flew as systems overloaded, and suddenly Novak found herself being pulled towards the airlock. She clawed at the floor, fighting the decompression, but it was too strong. With a last desperate lunge, she snagged a length of cable and braced herself as she was sucked out into Kriosfru's toxic atmosphere. Choking and disoriented, Novak reeled herself back towards the airlock. Every breath was agony as the poisonous air seared her lungs. With trembling hands, she overrode the emergency protocols and stumbled back inside. The outpost was in chaos. Fires raged unchecked as Graves' troops searched for her. Novak dragged herself to the command hub, 
her vision blurring. She had one last card to play. As her fingers danced across the outpost's environmental controls, Novak allowed herself a grim smile. The oxygen saturation was climbing rapidly. One spark and this entire facility would become a raging inferno. She triggered the detonation sequence and ran. Explosions rocked the outpost as Novak sprinted for the escape pods. Heat seared her back as she dove into the last functioning capsule. The pod rocketed away from the doomed facility. Through the viewport, Novak watched as the outpost was consumed in a massive fireball. Her communicator crackled to life, a Romulan signal. As the cloak ship shimmered into view, Novak allowed exhaustion to overtake her. There was still work to be done, graves to be exposed, but for now, she had won a vital victory. The pod's hatch opened, and Novak found herself looking into the concerned face of a Romulan officer. Lieutenant Novak? he asked. We have much to discuss. Lieutenant Novak? the Romulan officer repeated, his brow furrowing with concern. Can you stand? Novak gritted her teeth, pushing herself upright despite the searing pain in her lungs. I'm fine, she managed, her voice raspy from the toxic atmosphere. We need to move quickly. As they made their way through the sleek Romulan vessel, Novak's mind raced. She clutched a data crystal containing the evidence she'd extracted from Corver's lab, proof of Graves' treachery that could change everything. The ship's captain, a stern-faced Romulan named Tavrell, awaited them on the bridge. Your transmission was most illuminating, Lieutenant, she said, gesturing to a holographic display. We've arranged an emergency meeting with the Alliance leadership. The next hours passed in a blur of encrypted transmissions and tense negotiations. Novak presented her evidence, her voice growing stronger as she laid out Graves' collusion with the Archon and his plans for Earth. She watched the faces of the Alliance leaders, human, Romulan, and others, grow pale as the full scope of the betrayal became clear. There was no mistaking the gravity of the situation. We must act immediately, Admiral Chen declared, his holographic form flickering slightly. Graves cannot be allowed to... The Admiral's words were cut short as alarms blared across the Romulan ship. Tavrell's fingers danced across her console, her eyes widening. Multiple detonations detected on Earth's surface, she reported, her usual composure cracking. Atmospheric composition is changing rapidly. Novak felt her heart sink as she watched the holographic representation of Earth. Fiery orange blooms spread across continents, consuming everything in their path. Graves had played his hand. He's using the oxygen bombs, Novak breathed, horror etched across her face. He's turning them against Earth itself. The bridge erupted into chaos as reports flooded in. Earth's defensive systems, now under Graves' control, were turning away all attempts at intervention. The planet was burning, and they were powerless to stop it. Admiral Chen's hologram flickered back to life, his face grim. Lieutenant Novak, Captain Tivrell, you are hereby authorized to take whatever action necessary to neutralize Graves and secure Earth's defensive grid. Tavrell nodded sharply. Understood, Admiral. We'll assemble a strike team immediately. As the Romulan ship accelerated towards Earth, Novak found herself in the armory, checking her gear with shaking hands. She looked up to see Captain Wilder stride in, his face a mask of grit. I hear we're going to save the world, Wilder said, grabbing a plasma rifle from the rack. Novak managed a grim smile. Just another day at the office, Captain. As they prepared to deploy, Novak caught sight of Earth through a viewport. The once blue marble was now a seething inferno, great swathes of its surface obscured by roiling clouds of fire and smoke. She felt a pang of grief for her homeworld, quickly replaced by a burning persistence. Graves had to be stopped, whatever it takes. As the strike team boarded their stealth landers, Novak knew that the fate of humanity, and perhaps the entire galaxy, hung in the balance. The landers detached from the Romulan ship, streaking towards Earth's atmosphere. As they punched through the turbulent, superheated air, Novak gripped her harness tightly. The true battle was just beginning. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, 
I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.